Well, good morning. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Despite the fact that awareness of this issue has increased, the problem continues to be a major concern. We'll talk more about that right now. From TV6, this is The Ryan Report. Now, here's your host, Don Ryan. Well, the Marquette Women's Center was first established in 1973 as a department in the Division of Continuing Education at NMU. In the years to follow, the center continued to develop and grow, and today is an independent organization with its own administrative building and the Harbor House, which provides shelter to victims of partner violence. It provides services to both residential and outreach clients. The center's executive director is Beth Cassidy, and she's our guest this morning. Welcome to the show. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's very nice to have you. You know, just so people get to know you a little bit first, where are you from originally? Oh, I'm a Hoosier. A Hoosier, um, okay. Born and raised in Indiana. I've lived in Chicago, Boston, New York okay. City. My husband and I, Jim Cantrell, came here in 1990. Jim is with Northern Michigan University. So, and we love Marquette. It's a very supportive community. So you came here with him? That's what brought you to Marquette? I came here with Jim. And uh, I was a dental hygienist at that time. Went back to school, got my master's in public administration. Went on to work in healthcare, the Upper Peninsula Health Plan. Um, was there for 10 years doing operations, government relations, and healthcare compliance. I then went on to Milwaukee to help start a health plan down okay. there for Molina Healthcare, and that was a lot of fun. But a community marriage is hard, and so I returned and was the director of compliance for Pioneer Surgical until they were sold to RTI Biologics and became RTI Surgical. Mm -hmm. So you've been in the healthcare field, but pretty much in administrative and type jobs. Yeah, and yeah. I've been connected with the Women's Center since I came to Marquette in 1990. I was very much attracted to it. At that time, Sue Kensington was the executive director, and I find her, I did find her to be very vital and inspirational and was on their board a couple times. I was on the board in 95 when we decided to that the Harbor House that we had was just way too small. It was on Fisher Street and just too small for our needs. And so we made the decision to purchase the house on Barriga Avenue. And I was only on the board for a couple of years. I got off for some personal reasons and then kind of stayed away from the Women's Center. I think you know, it's hard to be on a board when you work full time and, sure. and I was traveling a bit. And when I lost my job at Pioneer Surgical, um, I didn't think I wanted to work again, and so I semi-retired and got very involved in the community again, and back on the board for the Women's Center, and we were going through a major transition. I was going to say, you know, they, they went through kind of a rough patch, didn't they? We don't have to get into all the details. Yeah, they did. Um, there were some management issues back in 2010, 2011, and I don't know all the details of that, but what happened was that many of the founding mothers and Sue Kensington and some other former directors came back and got on the board and resurrected. They did not want to see that organization falter. And so you know, financially we were doing okay, but there were some management issues. And so, um, and then when I was on the board in 2015, we did lose Phyllis Loon's foot, our longtime program director. Phyllis was thrown into the role of having to do program and executive directorship and she got very tired and when Phyllis resigned the board took that as an opportunity to go in and restructure okay. which is what we did. Okay. So. And it, it's kind of interesting because I know some of the original people are involved. It's kind of like a who's who of women it, who have accomplished things it, here in Marquette It's County. an incredible organization. It's very interesting. You know when you think of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and we're very rural. And the, ki the, the women that started that organization, Pat Michelow, who has um, you know, this history of in law school, she did this wonderful research project that we live by, uh, Carlin Rapport, Sally May, right. you know, and I and of course I think of Geraldine Defont. Certainly, um, certainly, was a part of that organization. So I, again, like I said, I was very much attracted to these women when we moved here in 1990. I picked up a quote that you said when you were hired. I think that ensuring the Women's Center gets its message out to the public loud and clear that the center is an asset to the community was something you wanted to make sure happened. I do. I think that for whatever reason. Um, 
And of course, one of the reasons why I went off of the board and decided to to go through the process of, um, you know, I submitted my application, we had a, a hiring process. I felt like I could do more for the center. You know, when you're a board member, you have to be very hands off. And I'm very much an organizer, I'm a communicator. My first degree, bachelor's in communication studies. Okay. And so it's just, I look at it as it's a very fun job for me. It's, it's probably the culmination of my career, you know, um, I'm headed into retirement soon. And so if I can help establish the Women's Center to be more financially stable, that would be wonderful for me okay. to do. The, um, as I was looking at some of the history, it, you know, it, it seems like the early, the early Women's Center, um, the changing role of women in the 70s. You know, and back then the focus was really on establishing women's rights, which are now firmly established. The, the mission has changed a lot, hasn't it? It has, and that, you know, and we, we try not to forget our history. Um, women still have a lot to deal with. I mean, still, there still is uh, pay inequity. Um, but that's very much a part of our history. And so we are a feminist organization. And, but, but as the center has evolved, we have contracts with the state. We have six contracts and one federal cut, co so seven contracts totally. And our money comes to pay for domestic violence and sexual assault services. And so one of the struggles I think that we have as an organization, and other nonprofits are probably this way too, is that, yeah, we have this history, and it's a history of women being supportive of other women, but, you know, unless we have a lot of money, our focus, you know, is on domestic violence and sexual right. assault. We don't have money to do conscious raising groups or right. those wonderful things that they used to do okay. back in the 70s and 80s. We'll talk more about domestic violence when we return. Back with more on the Ryan Report after we take this break. Oh. Our guest this morning is Beth Cassidy, the Executive Director of the Women's Center in Marquette. Let me read something to you. The, the number of American troops killed in Afghanistan and Iraq between 2001 and 2012 was 6,488. The number of American women who were murdered by current or ex-male partners during that time was 11,766, nearly double the amount of casualties lost during the war. Th this really is a Obviously, the problem is serious, but the magnitude is, is hard it, to believe. It is, and you know, um, I think many of us are insulated from seeing that. I know that I certainly was until I really, even as a board member, I think I was insulated from that. But when you are working in it, um, it's a minefield. It's, it, it, it's really very prevalent. And the thing about domestic violence and even sexual assault is that it really crosses demographic boundaries. Um, what we see, we have contracts from the state. Anyone can walk into our organization and get a service. We don't have to do an eligibility income. You know, the state pays us to provide those things regardless. And so I see women and men and children from all walks of life come in. They might, um, I've seen women come in with their husbands where they've had, um, a previous person that they know in the community is stalking them and they want to get a personal protection order. I've had mothers call me where they feel like their son, they need a personal protection order from the son or the daughter. So um, when you look at domestic violence, it really spans a large number of people. And again, um, the women that we tend to see in our shelter are women who don't have really any other resources. So what we do, we want people to get out of an unsafe situation. We want to bring them into a, a safe home, a safe place, so that they can start rebuilding their lives. And that often means that they're bringing their children with them. You know, we, we're obviously becoming very aware of this problem. Are we becoming more aware of the causes? I think, you know, it's a violent crime. Um, I think domestic violence, when you look at a lot of it's about control. I think that you live what you learn. 
or you learn what you live is the better way to say it. For example, um, if you've grown up in a home where um, the typical example of domestic violence is that you know the father's controlling and might slap his wife around, and it can be vice versa. I mean, we do have men, and I think that goes unreported, um, but that's sort of the typical example that we see. If you grow up in that environment, you're going to treat people like that, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that you get into this cycle of violence where people grow up that way. And until we really stop that, we're still going to see domestic violence in our communities. What are we seeing in the UP, and, and specifically in Market County, for example? Well, it's hard to say. Michigan tends to be one of the states that has a higher prevalence of domestic violence. Um, and I don't really know specifically for the Upper Peninsula. We have a less of a population. So when you look at our numbers, you know, you look at a prosecutor's numbers or things um, that have gone through the court system, we tend to be lower than, say, the Detroit area. But when one in three women or one in five men are affected by domestic violence in a year, that's a lot. That's a high number on a national level. And I tend to think that we are very high in Marquette and Alger County because we serve Alger mm. County also. For those who don't understand or don't know, tell us what Harbor House is. Well, Harbor House is our shelter. And so we have room for 14 to 16 people to, when someone calls for our help and we have a crisis line and we have a whole team that will go in and remove that person if they want that assistance to take them out of that unsafe housing environment, we move them into the shelter and the shelter is protected. It's right across the street from the prosecutor's office, catacorner to the police station. We have security cameras up. Um, not anyone can go in there. So we get them into a safe situation and then what we do is we don't coddle them. We help them get their lives back together. If they need assistance with housing. Really what we want to do is get them into safe shelter, establish a safety plan, you know, do they need a job, help them to get a job. We serve as a resource okay. to get, and we really serve families, you know, and I think the dialogue that we need to have and the 100 Good Men campaign starts that dialogue is that I think there are many men who are affected by domestic violence or sexual assault, and those numbers are very much underreported. Um, same thing with children. Um, so, although we tend, and women are the natural survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, but there's also another component too. Okay, we have to take one more break. Back with more on the Ryan Report in just two minutes. Again, we're talking with the Women's Center's Beth Cassidy. Uh, before we leave the Harbor House, um, you mentioned you have room for 14 people. How, how full are you? What, what kind of a capacity rate do you run? Well, I equate it to this. At any one time, we have eight to 12 guests in our house. Right. So, and our contracts mandate that we provide certain things. So not only do we provide them a safe place, um, it has to be safe, it has to be clean. We have to provide three nutritious meals a day, snacks, diapers, hygiene supplies, paper products, laundry facilities. Okay. So we are busy. So one of the big issues has to be financing, fundraising. You have maybe like a $900,000 budget somewhere in that? We, you're, we do, close to a million dollars, close 900 a million dollars. A million dollars. All of our contracts from the state pay for what we call direct client services. So we have to raise, you know, through funding. We have a pack rats. We have a, a resale shop that provides a revenue source. We have some rentals in our building on Front Street. But we have to pay for our administrative offices. My salary is not paid for through state grants because I don't have client access. And so we have to raise, you know, close to, you know, a good one third to one half of our budget okay. in order to provide those kinds of services at Harbor House. And how do you do that? I know you've had, you have a um, big gala coming up. We do, we do. The Evening of Elegance has been going for a number of years, the Landmark Inn, and the, and the tradition is, uh, is continuing with the new owners, and we're very fortunate mm -hmm. for that. 
the um, Landmark Inn provides the space and their chef, and then we have some local chefs that come in, and then we have a vendor who chooses to remain anonymous, a food vendor who donates all the food. So we have 100 tickets to sell. They're at $100 each, and then all of that money directly comes back to uh, the Women's Center and the Harbor House. And so we don't have to pay for anything. We have a silent auction, a live auction, and this year, Matt Weesey and I, are going to be MCs okay. together. Right. Um, Matt's a great prosecutor uh, for our county. Right. We have a good relationship. Well, with I know you have a great relationship with he, with him, and with the police agencies in Marquette. We do, and I also want to mention in Alger County, Karen Barman okay. is the prosecutor, and we have a very good relationship with her. Okay. And so, yeah, we do. We have wonderful relationships. Um, there's a, a and then another show for you would be the Blueprint Project. Um, that Matt Weesey has the grant for. Okay, and you uh, you had your 100 good men? We did, we... Um, did you find we, 100 good men? We found 179 All good right. men, yeah. and what we wanna do in the future with that is to build up, we had the first one this year. We really wanna, I think men do wanna be a part of the solution, they just don't know how. And so we wanted to involve something to get them involved, and I had men, it was so much fun. Um, men who would stop by out of nowhere and give us some money and you know we'd recognize that so we want to build off of that platform because really it's a discussion that communities need to make how do we treat people mm -hmm. you know this is about common you know common sense we don't slap people around right. um, we treat them like human individuals. Anything else in the fundraising area you want to mention? That we haven't um, Pack Rats, again, is a major, you know, shopping there, donating to there really benefits us greatly. We have a lot of third-party fundraisers. Um, people just do fundraisers and show up with money. That's so beneficial for us. So, I, but I think what the community needs to realize is that, you know, they, they really need to support this because it's an asset. And we have to think about what would we do if this went away? We have only a minute left. I think we should take a moment and address the question of if there's a woman out there or anyone out there who, who feels they're in a terrible situation, what, what should they do? They need to, um, first of all, get help. And how they do that, you know, they can always turn to our agency. We have a crisis line number um, for them to call that's readily available on our website. Um, and unfortunately, you know, of all the things, I didn't bring that today. but. But that's Caller, just the Women's Center and Mar Marquette Women's Center. We'll yeah, we will always get direct help. It's always confidential. We're bound by those sort of rules. Um, you know, if, if you're not comfortable coming into the center, we do have offices. We can meet them at, out at Sawyer. We can meet them in Ishpeming. And of course, we have the Alger office. Um, but we go, we, we take many steps to, to keep people safe. Okay. If there's someone outside of Marquette County could they call you and perhaps get some advice on who they might They sure have? can, and that's the thing about these mm -hmm. shelters. We have about five other shelters in the Upper Peninsula, and um, often, I think we have to think about people are escaping their environment, so we may get people from Minnesota or Wisconsin. Okay. We have to wrap it up. Thanks for coming oh, in this morning. I appreciate it. a pleasure. I enjoyed it so much. I think it's a very important subject. Back with some other thoughts after we take this break. This morning, a little reminiscing. I got my start in the broadcast business as a radio announcer a long time ago. I did a little bit of everything, including news and play-by-play -play sports. But I also spent a lot of time being a DJ. That meant in those days playing records, hour after hour, day after day, year after year. Because the custom was to play the popular records more frequently, there are a lot of songs from the 50s and 60s forever embedded in my memory. And I never know which one may pop into my head at any moment. Case in point, I was in the shower the other morning when suddenly, for no apparent reason, a song called The Old Lamp Lighter was going through my head. I don't know why, because there was nothing in my experience that morning that had any connection to that song. But there I was. I could talk about the fact that once you get a song in your head, it's hard to get it out, but we'll save that for another day. Let me instead focus on that particular song and the thoughts it brought forward in my mind. The song was by a group called The Browns and it climbed to number five on the pop charts in March of 1960. It was also sung by Gene Autry in the movie Twilight on the Rio Grande, which first appeared in theaters in 1947. The lyrics of the song went like this. He made the night a little brighter, wherever he would go, the old lamp lighter of long, long ago. 
If there were sweethearts in the park, he'd pass a lamp and leave it dark, remembering the days that used to be, the old lamplighter of long, long ago. The song takes us back to the days before electric streetlights, which was well before my time, by the way, when a lamplighter was employed to light the streetlights that were generally candles, oil, or some other consumable liquid. In any case, they were from a simpler time, and that's where my mind took me as the song was going through my head. We have a tendency to glamorize or romanticize how great things used to be. And there's no question, some aspects of life were nicer. It seems people were different, more respectful and civil to one another. Thoughts of the old days conjure up visions of Andy Griffith and Opie wandering down to the creek to wet a fishing line. In those days, even politicians could be nice to each other once in a while. But everything wasn't better back then. Cars didn't come with all the conveniences and safety features they have today. Watching TV in black and white on that 17-inch screen didn't hold a candle to what we have today. And of course, do you really want to turn in your flush toilet for an outhouse? It's true the old days offered some definite benefits, but today also has some things going for it. And as far as those songs that pop into my head, don't read too much into it. They can take me in a lot of different directions. Right now I have the beer barrel polka running through my head. Where do I go with that? It's time for us to wrap it up for another week. The Today Show will be coming up in just a moment. Remember the latest news, sports, and weather is yours any time of the day or night. Go to UpperMichiganSource.com. You'll also find the Ryan Report available at that same location. Click on the nav navigation bars on the upper left part of the screen and scroll down to the Ryan Report. Domestic violence is a major issue in this country. I appreciate Beth Cassidy from the Marquette Women's Center joining us this morning to talk about the subject during Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope we can look forward to seeing you again next Sunday morning.